Hi, I'm Sheila. And I'm Mike. Welcome to our sustainable yard and virtual tour. One of the first areas we have here is our rock garden. And one of the things we wanted to do here was really just kind of work with some different ground covers as a lawn alternative. So we have over 30 different types of ground cover which we kind of placed out and they started in pretty small three inch pots. I like to call it my little mini fairy garden. Um, a lot of these uh, ground covers are things that you would see in a fairy garden. This is our garden tower which was a new addition to, um, to our garden a couple years ago. It has about 30 something little pockets which we have um, herbs and some greens um, planted in there. But the best part about this is it is a vermicompost. So you use, um, we have special composting red worms that are in there. We add our kitchen scraps in there. Um, they work their way through it. And out comes this beautiful rich soil from the worm casings, which we then use to amend our other um, planters and such. This is our water feature, and fresh water is very important to uh, wildlife insects, birds, animals, filled it with flat rocks so it's very shallow and the birds and the animals can actually get into the water and bathe and drink. There's a little circulating pump that makes the water fall and the, it keeps the water clean and filtered and it also provides the sound of running water which is what attracts a lot of the animals. We have some natives, we have uh, cardinal flower, we have sweet flag and scouring rush and they all have, have uh, they like wet feet so they do really really well in this area. This is a non-native but it's a dwarf cattail and it does provide some privacy um, for the birds and animals that come and use this. So these are raised beds that we uh, got the idea for from another yard tour that we were on from Go Green Wilmette and they're made with um, mainly recycled lumber. The, um, the soil in here dries out quickly, so what we've done is we put um, garden fabric down and the plants grow, grow through that and it helps retain moisture. And then we put a sand layer on top and that also helps retain moisture and provide some um, isolation. One of the things we start doing this year are raising monarchs. These are um, some of our current monarchs that just went into their chrysalis um, about a day ago. So they'll be in this for maybe 12 days and they'll emerge, um, let their wings dry out for a few hours and then we will release them and hopefully we'll see them back in our yard. We managed to raise the odds to over 90%, 99%. And that swaps the current um, trend of less than 10% of monarchs survive from egg to adulthood. So our copper arbor was another idea that we got um, from uh, viewing a couple houses on the tour. Um, and we have these black raspberries, these legacy black raspberries, and they had naturally began to kind of grow in an arch. So we built this for our raspberries to grow up. It's late in the season, so right now we have um, Armenian cucumbers, yellow cucumbers, and these beautiful mouse melon cucumbers, um, which are amazing growing on this. So um, within a couple more weeks, this will probably be completely filled over. So this has just been kind of a wonderful thing to kind of watch and as it fills in um, it's also a place where birds like to kind of hang out give themselves some privacy and uh, shelter. So we really like building things and a couple of the things that we built are um, number one an owl house which uh, is hung in our tree and it's designed to uh, provide a nesting box for eastern screech owls. We also built a, a bat house spend the summer days in the bat house when they're nurse, nursing their babies and they, so we added gutters to our garage and so we had to deal with the issue of the water coming off the gutters. The rain chain helps diffuse the water coming off the gutter and to absorb the water we dug down in the ground about three feet until we hit sand. In this area once you get through the clay it's almost pure sand and it's very uh, permeable and porous and so most of the rains go right into the rocks and into the sand. One of the things you've seen in our yard were ideas that we got from going on the Go Green Wilmette Sustainable Yard Tour in, in years past. And what we found is there's a lot of really easy things that we could do to make our yard more enjoyable for us and also much better habitat for pollinators, birds, and animals. And 
and in some ways that just helps mitigate the things that are going on, the loss of habitat, the use of pesticides in other places, and we feel like we're doing our part and we're really enjoying our yard. So our yard is a result of uh, quite a few years of working on projects together, but we started small. So I think that's the key. Um, if you want to start making changes in your yard, pick a small project that you can do, and that's your, your project for this season, and build upon it.